Light is fantastic. It helps us see stuff. Stuff like flowers, cars, people, trees, smiles, cities and stars. It can make people feel safe, amazed and even warm. It's also incredibly useful for many other things depending on the kind of light. Oh, that's right, there are different kinds of light. All of it is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. The difference between each type or color of light comes down to its frequency. This is how many times the light particle or photon oscillates per second. This is also related to its wavelength. The faster the photon oscillates, the more energy it has and the shorter the wavelength. What we can see with our eyes is only a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. What we call visible light, imaginative right? Typically humans see between 400 nanometers, which is where the violets and blues are, up to around 700 nanometers, which is the oranges and reds. As we go longer in wavelength up to around 0.3 millimeters, we get the infrareds, which is what is commonly used by heat vision goggles and cameras, certain types of heaters, and fiber optic communications. The James Webb Space Telescope is actually an infrared telescope. Longer still is the microwave regime, which is typically where most Wi-Fi, satellite communication, and other wireless technologies lie. Of course, there is also the microwave oven, which uses a small, specific range of microwaves to excite water, which then heats your food with friction and makes it easy to make popcorn. We used the space telescope Planck to measure the cosmic microwave background. Once wavelengths get to about a meter or larger, they fall into the radio wave part of the spectrum. Almost by its name, I am sure you can figure out what radio waves are used for. Yep, television. Wait, that's not what you were thinking? Oh, you were thinking of GPS. Or, oh, wait, radio waves? Radio. Yes, yes, okay, you're right. Radio and two-way radios also use radio waves. Radio astronomy is also quite fascinating and have some of the largest telescopes in the world. We actually used radio astronomy to capture the recent images of the black hole at the center of the galaxy. So all these types of electromagnetic radiation have less energy than visible light. Remember what I said about how the shorter the wavelength, the more energy? Well, what if we go shorter than visible light? Well, then we start to get things like ultraviolet light, which is where we start to see what is called ionizing radiation. This is where the photon actually has enough energy to rip electrons away from atoms. This changes how that atom interacts chemically with other atoms around it, causing chemical reactions. In living tissues, we can see this as sunburn, or worse, melanoma which is why you should always wear sunscreen. Once the wavelengths get shorter again, we start to get x-rays. While x-rays also do have ionization capabilities, with the right set of wavelengths, they can be used in medicine for things like, well, x-rays. Once we get shorter again, we get to gamma rays. These are some of the most energetic and dangerous photons out there. They come from things like black holes, cosmic rays, and radioactive decay. While dangerous, Gamma rays are still useful in medicine for things such as radiation cancer therapy. We can only see a very small section of the electromagnetic spectrum. Different kinds of light are everywhere, all around us, passing through us and even being emitted by us. Light carries an incredible amount of information in its spectra and polarization. When you next look up at the night sky, just remember you're barely seeing any of its majesty. But what you are seeing is likely hundreds, if not thousands, of years old.